Hello everyone, hopefully you're enjoying the latest update where you have Scum VM support, where you can play awesome games such as 7th Guest, Beavis and Butthead and Virtual Stupidity, Curse of Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle, which is essentially Maniac Mansion 2, Full Throttle, the King's Quest series, Leisure Suit Larry, and so on. I mean, but today we're going to be doing a bit of a Sega Dreamcast performance optimization upgrade and such, a little bit of showcase. Now I'm going to also show you how to use uh, the Dreamcast cheats that I added in the last update as well. I'm going to load uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and I'm going to show you something very, very interesting. Those of you who are more initiated with the minis uh, up to this point would realize that some of the cores, due to the higher accuracy, do not run as well on certain games. So the SNES 9X 2016 might not run as well on some games, but 2005 does. This is the same with the MAME cores as far as MAME 2014 versus MAME 2003 and of course uh, Final Burn Alpha 2012 versus Final Burn Alpha 2016. This is going to be the exact same way with Recast, the Dreamcast core. So in the next update I'm actually going to include them so you can dual install them. And uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is one game that runs better on the lower accuracy core and I'm going to give you a perfect example of this right now. I'm going to run this game on the Recast Extreme. It's not going to run as well as on the lower accuracy version. See a little bit of a sound stutter here. And you'll know from the character select screen right away. A little bit of a sound stutter there. Not what I want as far as uh, playing the game. And you also notice we have 24 characters there. We're going to up the Andy here a little bit. I'm going to do the dummy floor method right now. I'm going to go to a uh, load core. And again, you're going to have two recast cores to work with next update. You're going to have the standard one right here and the recast extreme. For some of the more stubborn games such as Marvel vs. Capcom 2, you're going to want to run the normal one, which I'm going to do right now. I'm loading that core. Then I'm going to load content, do the dummy floor method for right now. I'll go to my Dreamcast folder and reload Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And I'm going to load it with the same exact core. And the appropriate way to do cheats would be once you get into the core, which I'm going to be into right now in a moment here. I'm going to go into Retro Archive Settings, Quick Menu, Cheats, Load Cheat File Replace, go to the Sega Dreamcast folder. Then uh, select the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cheats. And unlock all characters. It's a four part code. On, 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 on. That's good for now. Then I'm going to resume the game. And then I should have all the characters unlocked from the get go. These cheats are incredibly awesome. And once you really know the game well, and you've played the game, you know, pretty much uh, run its course, it is very, very fun to check out some of these codes. Just like with uh, the Mega Man games, using Moon Jump is incredibly awesome. Definitely new ways to experience your previous games. Running much, much better on the lower accuracy one. And again, you're going to be able to choose between these depending on the games. And uh, this is one of the few games that I found that is going to benefit from being on the lower accuracy one. But let's see how many characters we have unlocked here. Wow. Awesome here. Okay, let's see what we have to go with here. Uh... Really, really cool here. Loving all these unlockable characters. How about the a Sir Bot? <laughs> Just looking at these awesome characters that are unlocked here. I'm going to add Thanos as a main character for sure. Uh, let's do the Sir Bots as a, a secondary character. They very, very much remind me of the Minions. The Minions must have ripped off the Sir Bots. And these are from Tron Bone, obviously. And we'll do one more character here. Blackheart, Sabretooth, who else do we have? A Juggernaut, why not? And 
and again, uh, when we're talking about accuracy versus compatibility and such, I mean, you're going to see exactly what I talk about with some of the examples today. And I am very, very much looking forward to uh, Infinity Gauntlet 2. The first one was an incredibly cool movie. And with the uh, 20th Century Fox merger, I have a feeling we're going to see Wolverine show up in part two, maybe some other X-Men. And one thing I love about the Capcom games is if you uh, pick a character like I just picked with Thanos and uh, you might not necessarily know the moves, I just try out some of the moves from other characters such as uh, Ken and Ryu. And I'm doing some of their moves and they seem to be working just fine with Thanos. Very, very cool. Nice and fast paced. Very, very awesome here. And now we're going to try another game and uh, try cheats for that as well. We'll try Hydro Thunder. Another one of my favorite Dreamcast games. And there are a few other perks uh, and advantages to this update that you're going to see. I'm going to show you, uh, showcase a few of these. But again, you're going to have more compatibility if you use Recast Extreme. And uh, definitely more games are going to run. But a game like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for now, you're going to want to run with a normal recast. Okay, we're going to load up Hydro Thunder here. One can never have enough Hydro Thunder! I mean, I played every version from the original arcade version, to the Dreamcast version, to the PS2 version, which is essentially Midway Arcade Treasures Volume 3, and of course the PC version. I'm going to go into the cheats right now. Load cheat file replace, uh, Sega Dreamcast folder. And we'll go to the Hydro Thunder. And there are uh, two versions here. You're going to have better chances probably with the 1.01. I'm going to uh, toggle on Infinity Boost and enable all tracks and boats. And some people have actually messaged me after I did the Dreamcast update with Hydro Thunder. How come I'm playing tracks and beating them but I'm not unlocking more tracks? The reason why is like with many racing games you have to get first place in order to unlock more tracks. That is the way it is for some racing games. So I'm going to resume now. And uh, Midway is now pretty much owned by Warner Brothers because they went defunct and uh, bankrupt. Uh, Warner Brothers, if you're listening, you really, really do need to get the original arcade version of Hydro Thunder on Xbox One and or PlayStation 4. We need this game. So we're going to check out this awesome game here. And we should have uh, all the boats and tracks unlocked as well as Infinity Nitro and Turbo. And I'll do a few more showcase games after this one here. Choose your okay, we got all the tracks unlocked. We'll do Lake Powell. Lake Powell. Choose your. And we'll try one of the bonus boats here. Arm response. Arm response. All tracks are open to race. Three, two, one. Go, go, go. I do have Infinity Boost right now. The way you definitely know you have Boost is if you hit an enemy. And you knocked him out of commission. Whereas if you do not have boost and you hit an enemy, it'll knock you out of commission. And I'm just playing for fun right now. I mean, if I get first place, awesome. If not, I'm still having fun. And typically, I would uh, play a game and pretty much experience everything the game has to offer. Every nook and cranny before I use a cheat. But again, when you play a game like Mega Man 2, it is definitely fun to do that moon jump as I mentioned. And one thing I absolutely love about Hydro Thunder is the amount of airtime you can get throughout the various levels, and there's no shortage of it whatsoever. We need a shortcut here. Why not? Very, very cool game. Never gets old. How many of you have played Ridge Racer and tried to jump over the helicopter? We've all done it. Here comes my airtime. time. 
pretty awesome. Hey, we got first place. And we got a few more games to test out today because, uh, with the compatibility update, we also have more optimization and many, many more games run quite considerably better. I'm going to show you a few of these right now. Aside from being a Hydro Thunder fan, I am a big shmup fan and Ikaruga, Ikaruga, whichever way you want to put it, is also an equally awesome game. I'm going to play that right now. It runs a lot better. There's still some graphical glitches, but the speed is more intense and much more playable than ever before. So here we come, Ikaruga, Ikaruga, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Tomato, Tomato, great, great game made by Treasure, and Treasure has many awesome games such as Radiant Silver Gun, Gunstar Heroes, they even had team members work on Contra 3, Alien Wars, then we have the European only game uh, that I am aware of, it might have been in Japan too, called Alien Soldier. On the Mega Drive, great, great game as well. We really, really need a treasure collection. And of course, our Guardian Heroes is also equally awesome. A Sega Saturn game. They got a bit of a reboot of it on the Xbox 360. And uh, I believe they have a Game Boy Advance version too. And this game is now available on, uh, you know, Xbox and PlayStation. It has one really, really cool gimmick where you can actually go between light and dark and deflect the enemy uh, attacks accordingly. I'm going to show you this. And they actually did a Metroidvania game in this vein called Outland, which has the same thing where you can switch between light and dark at the touch of a button. Okay, look how awesome this runs compared to before. But I'm light colored right now and all light doesn't touch me whatsoever. You'll see this as I do some of this uh, first level here. Definitely considerable better than before. And there are a few other games that run a lot better than I'm also going to show you in this test demonstration. Okay. See, I can push one button to go between light and dark. And depending on which color I am, the enemy fire won't be able to touch me. Very, very cool, and you're going to see it in a better example within the next minute or so. See, the enemy uh, dark color doesn't hurt me, the light color doesn't hurt me. I'll do a few swaps like this throughout the course of this. Bullet hell schmups at its finest. And that was the wrong color there. <laughs> I'll get this. I can definitely live with the graphical glitches because the game is playing quite awesome right now. Right there? Well, I screwed up on that one. <laughs> Two fails. I can do this. I need to at least beat the first stage here. Okay, I'm on the boss battle here. I should get a perfect showcase of being able to swap between dark and light here. Yeah, I'm not being hurt by light right now, but I have to avoid the dark. It definitely gets uh, much more challenging, especially when you're playing full speed on a uh, PS4 
and or the original Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, and of course Xbox, which they are all available on right now. I did buy this game at a bargain big price at only five US dollars at Walmart because it didn't sell at the time. There we go, I switched between uh, darker, but only light skin to hurt me. Very, very cool boss battle. Love the gimmick here between light and dark. Let's take this boss out so we can move on to another game. Okay, light, dark, pretty interesting gimmick here. Look how insane this is. Okay, we got the boss out. Definitely playing a lot better than it did in previous releases. Very, very happy here. Now we're going to move on to another Dreamcast game. Uh, we'll do Fantasy Star Online V2, which is my favorite game on the system, period. Bar none. And I had I definitely have to say that I've probably played Fantasy Star Online V2 more than any game you could conceivably think of for console and or PC over the years. But uh, since we just played this incredibly awesome treasure made game called Ikaruga, we're going to try this equally awesome game. There's a great fan made homebrew independently made game for Neo Geo which just happens to run on the Dreamcast emulator in the latest update. It's called Gunlord. And I have to tell you from the get-go, I was uh, completely blown away by the impeccable production values of this game from the score, sound effects, gameplay, graphics, visuals. I mean, everything about this game is incredibly awesome from the get-go. It is also, unfortunately, not fully playable. It does have a crash point, which I'm going to try to work around to find a good way so we can fully play this. But you're going to see how awesome this game is for right now. If you're a big fan of Neo Geo games in general, this is an independent video game. Yes, one of the best that I've played in many, many years. NG Dev Team. I'd love to see what else this group of individuals has come up with, but I'm very, very thoroughly impressed with what they did with this, what they achieved. But again, if you're a Neo Geo and or Tur uh, Turrican fan, you're going to be right at home with this awesomeness. And I love the soundtrack. The score is impeccable here. Very, very much takes me back to the 1980s with soundtracks such as Jim Cotta, Kickboxer, Bloodsport, and even uh, stuff that Vangelis has done such as Blade Runner and, of course, Chariots of Fire. Definitely a surprise game here. Incredibly awesome. And how many of you are Turrican and Metroid fans have noticed the similarities and influence amongst the two series? I mean, there are definitely distinct similarities between Turrican and Metroid. I mean, it is, you cannot argue that point at all. But I love both series equally. They're both fun for what they're worth. And I'm very, very much looking forward to Metroid Prime 3 for when it does come out on the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully sometime in 2019 versus 2020. Again, this this game still has uh, freezes and crash points. It did not work in any previous update, but now it does. Many, many more games that are homebrew, fan-made, independent games do work on the latest release that I'm going to be putting out within the next week or so. But definitely digging this game. Very, very cool. And yes, you can actually play this on a real Neo Geo if you have it on a custom cartridge. I never had the luxury of owning a real 3DO and or 
uh, Neo Geo due to the exorbitant price tag. I mean, it was a very, very elitist thing. But I've had my experience with Neo Geo because luckily there are many, many collections over the years on various systems such as PlayStation 2, Wii, PS3, and so on. I've gotten every single downloadable version and collection of Neo Geo that I can possibly muster up the courage to find. And yes, they have the Neo Geo Mini out now, which has a great, great collection of games. And I've always been a fan of underdog systems. I've been a big fan of TurboGrafx-16, Sega Master System, and, a, and I'd have to say my favorite system of all time, which is not quite the underdog system, would be the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Even though I grew up on Atari 2600, Nintendo is where it started for me, as far as truly being the best system I've played. But there's really not one single video game system I'm not a fan of. I've had my equal share of fun with each and every one that I've ever had the luxury and opportunity of playing throughout my lifetime. I love the variety of weapons here, the scope of the design and stuff, really, really cool here. Dev team, you definitely make Treasure proud with your awesomeness here. But I'm hoping I can make it past the crash point. Because in my earlier recast test, I was able to get past a few crash points by freeing up memory by going into the Retro Arc 7s, which I'm going to attempt to do here. I know exactly where the game's going to start freezing or slowing down. I'm hoping I can make it past that point. Now, I love this bridge, this transcend, uh, Transcendence 2, more music here. Very, very cool. Now, I love games when they uh, have weather effects in them. They really need to do that more often. I mean, it works great. And Super Metroid, and of course, uh, games such as Super Ghosts and Ghosts. And I love when racing games have weather effects as well, especially Thunderstorms. It is a pretty rare occurrence to play a racing game that has weather effects, but very, very cool when they do do it. And like many arcade games, once your uh, game's over, your high score resets to zero. So it's definitely a type of game you'd want to come back to and attempt to master and do in as few many lives as possible and get a high score. But very, very impressed with this. I mean, these guys did a fantastic job. This game definitely needs to have a... Uh, a release on PlayStation 4 and or Xbox One and or even Nintendo Switch. It really needs to get out there because it is so cool. And as expected, the boss battles are incredibly cool in this game. I'll get to the first boss for you before I move on to Fancy Star Online V2. And I'm kind of wondering if there's a double jump in this game because that would definitely come in handy. Oh, very, very cool. A type of weapon you'd expect in a great game that Iron would make, such as our type. Very, very cool. Again, I'm blown away by the really, really cool variety of weapons in this game. There's definitely a lot to discover. I'm going to be coming back to this once I get the release out and play around with this a lot more. Definitely very cool. I'm going to at least get to the choke point where the game would typically crash for me in my test examples. And hopefully I'll be able to get past it this time. I have a pretty nice weapon. I need some health here. Come on, drop me some health here. It's 
So close. Oh yeah, I made it past the crash point. This is if you beat uh, if you lose on the boss a couple times, the game would freeze on you. But I made it past that point. Very very cool. So to get past the first crash point, you have to beat the first boss. But uh, the tip, way I would typically get past the crash points would be going into retro settings, waiting a few seconds, and resuming. So far, so good though. Oh, awesome. Has a schmop feel to it as well. Very, very awesome. And there's that freeze point I'm talking about right there. Where it slows down. I'm going to try to go with it for a few seconds here and see what happens. Glad I made it this far though, very very cool. I'm going to go into Retro Arc settings, wait a few seconds, hopefully the memory will clear up. And unlike with Nintendo 64, you cannot go into video settings and uh, do that uh, one option I told you about before, the SRGB video. Yeah, I even have memory locking up right here in Retro Arc settings. I can feel how sluggish and slow it is right now. So I'm going to consider this to need a little bit more work. I'm going to go back to the main user interface right now. Okay, now we're moving on to the pure awesomeness that is Fantasy Star Online V2, a.k.a. PSO V2. And one of the very first things you're going to need to take into account is the ability to save your game. If you go to the core set release, and to extras, Dreamcast, add VMU as a game, then sync it or export it, and you'll have it on your home menu, and then you can format and use one to four memory cards, which are absolutely mandatory for games such as Fancy Star Online V2. We're going to load this pure awesomeness up right now. And this is one of the very first MMORPGs that has ever been on a console. Very, very cool. Predates uh, World of Warcraft by a number of years. Definitely has its share of Leroy Jenkins moments. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a refresher course for those veterans of the series, as well as uh, nuances to adjust to for newcomers to the series. And I'd have to say I've probably played this more than any game that I could possibly imagine for any console and or PC over the years, as I mentioned before. Great, great game, and uh, created by Sonic Team, who also made Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. And uh, the original game came with a serial code and access key printed in the instruction manual in which you needed to uh, use to even play the game. The first time you play this, make sure you run it from the user interface, as well as uh, have the memory card formatted as I mentioned a minute ago, and do it from the options to start with. What's going to happen, you're going to get a little prompt on the screen here, which uh, right here says, information is tied to the serial number and access key. You're going to need to enter this here. And once you do that, it'll give you the chance to exit, and it'll save it to the memory card so you do not have to do it again. And if any of you have trouble with this step, let me know, because uh, my cat may bump the keyboard and help you out with it. But I'm going to continue my game, and uh, I started out with a ranger character. A character that is uh, focused on guns and such. Not the best starter character, a tough character to start with. There are multiple characters you can start out with, and I'm going to explain a few of them throughout the course of the video. And I'm going to work on uh, the online component uh, because it is technically in the code right now. And I'll get more into that in future updates and videos and such. But again, there are multiple uh, user types such as uh, magic users, androids, hunters, rangers, and so on. I choose the ranger as my starting character, but I would highly recommend if you're starting a game, use the hunter because they have good defense, attack, evasion, and all that good stuff. And a good combination of... Spells and weapons and techniques. I'm going to get down to the surface here. Let's get right into the fray the action. And if you like games such as Destiny, Castlevania Harmony of Despair, and the other games that are loot based and have their RNG random number generators, you're going to be right at home at games like this. It also has its elements of games such as Gauntlet, which I'm going to be showcasing more of in a... Uh, Horse driven against the part 15. Yes, we're up to part 15 now.
And just like in Castlevania, you're going to be paying attention to your stats on weapons and such. You notice I'm doing a triple hit combo with the light and heavy attacks. If you do it with the right timing and precision, you'll be able to do three hits in a row. If you mess up, you'll stun yourself and won't be able to do any attacks for approximately one entire second. This is ironically the one of the first games that I ever did uh, modding for with the Codebreaker and such. I mean, way, way back uh, in the early 2000s, uh, there's a website called GSCCC.com, which was affiliated with ArcadeAtHome.com, and they did codes for uh, Dreamcast, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and so on, and uh, I got in on it, and I did a bunch of codes for games like this, and even Choo Choo Rocket, and uh, Sword of the Berserk, many other Dreamcast games. And one of the very, very cool weapons you can unlock in this game is actually a double saber, just like uh, Darth Maul has in Episode 1 Phantom Menace. And see this enemy right here, the Yellow Bunny? Say, for instance, uh, it is an enemy that has a rare drop. It would be a blue enemy. So if you end up seeing an enemy that is typically yellow like this and they're blue, do, don't let it run away like that one is there. Take it out. I mean, whatever the cost, take it out. And, uh... You know, essentially, it'll drop a, a little box that has a question mark on it. You can take it into the town and have it checked out, and it'll be quantifiable as a rare item. And there are hundreds of rare items and multiple ways you can unlock them that's in the game. And I'm going to uh, clarify some of the unlocking techniques for the game. One is how many hours you invest in a game. I mean, anywhere from 1 hour to 999 hours. Number two is your section ID. I mean, when you first start out your character, you're uh, basically given a section ID. Right there, uh, K. Methy Manic, Raymar at the bottom right. Raymar is my character type. K. Methy Manic is my name. Yellow Bose is my section ID. And uh, there are roughly eight or so section IDs. And this one in particular gives me uh, even odds of getting about any rare in the game. And I'm going to, in my next update, I'm going to include in my extras, Mixoblick, you know, the Superman villain, uh, some documentation on Harmony of Despair, that Castlevania game, that I showcased in Horse Driver Against the Part 14, as well as uh, this game in particular. I mean, so you guys and guys can enjoy it more. Okay, let's see if I have anything uh, to equip here. I'll click a uh, Star Wars style weapon here. Yes, there's a double saber version of this, which is just like the Darth Maul one. And one of the very first codes I've ever done was actually a modification on a double saber where it was the same color as Darth Maul's uh, double saber. Very, very cool code. It was an item modifier code that I came up with. And there were some great, great people in GSCCC and ArcadeHome.com. One was Barrowberry. I mean, he did a lot of work with uh, Fancy Star Online. He also translated uh, the coding for one of the Fancy Star, uh, should I say Final Fantasy games, for Squaresoft. Him and a friend happened to live down the street from Squaresoft's headquarters, and it all worked out. I mean, the one guy named Harmony, that was his nickname online, he actually did the translation because he knew Japanese, and Barrowberry, since he had C plus uh, coding experience, he's the one who actually uh, coded it into the game. The Squaresoft actually let them do the translation, which was awesome. And I've played that translation, and many of you have probably played them over the years, too. And uh, the odds of getting certain weapons in the games, uh, like I said, are based on time, your section ID, and of course there are actual drop rates to the weapons and such. I mean, one of the best weapons you could possibly get for the character I have right here is a handgun that has a really, really cool uh, gimmick to it. It goes based on internet time. If you pause it right here, you can see at the bottom right, internet time at 2.12, 2.12 a.m. Based on even or odd hours, you could actually... Uh, have this special attack which is like a Star Wars satellite, you know, Ronald Reagan era, rays of destruction, coming down on many, many enemies on the screen at once, which is incredibly awesome. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a better weapon. I know I have a better weapon to go with. Uh, what do I have here? A rifle, yes. And uh, see if I have any armor. I'm looking at the stats here. And one of the biggest problems with online games in general was obviously the fact that uh, many games, be it Halo or Fantasy Star Online, had rampant cheating. No matter which game you play online, even Call of Duty, 
there's always cheating going on. Even World of Warcraft. I mean, no matter what companies try to do, cheating happens. And unfortunately, there were many malicious codes for games like this. I didn't really get into the aspect of uh, malicious codes. I was more into the rare items and such. I love having the rare items. This game definitely runs better than in previous updates, but I'm going to go over some of these malicious cheats that were leaked. They, yes, they were never supposed to be released, but uh, if you look at my health in the top left there, it says 57 out of 57. There's a magic number, 32,767. Just think of any health spell in any game where you're able to heal your teammates accordingly. Imagine if you were able to... Uh, Add 32,767 health points to that, and it actually sent it into a neg negative world, similar to in Super Mario Bros. negative world. It would actually player kill your teammates instantly, and yes, this is one of the biggest problems we had online. I mean, and there's a, a drawback to that, that actual uh, exploit, because when you die in this game, you drop all your money and your immediately equipped weapon. So imagine you unlock a crazy rare. Okay, I'm trapped right now. This is where you need a hunter. I'm trapped in a bad spot right here. Now you're seeing a weakness to being a ranger. You get cornered, you're screwed. This would never ever happen with a hunter. That's why you need a four player mode to activate. Cause you have a ranger, a magic user, a hunter and maybe an android. It works all incredibly well. But yes, rangers are not good at up close combat. I mean, I had to do that to get out of that little corner there. And uh, another thing that come into play is you always, always, uh, like in many games, one of the biggest things you can get in any game is the ability to teleport back to the hometown so that you can uh, stock up on your health items and such. And that is no different in this game. You have a spell that you could eventually unlock, but right now I have in my inventory, under items, a telepipe. I should have a tel- right there. This gets me back to town. You should make sure every character has at least one of these in the inventory. I mean, all the characters except for the androids could eventually unlock a spell, a Ryuka, whatever, to uh, take you back to town. But the androids cannot. Okay, let's get back to my uh, rifle here. And one of the other negative uh, codes that uh, went out that was leaked was one that had offensive magic spells that were able to target the enemies, but they were made to target the uh, teammates as well, which really, really ended up being in a bad way, which I'm going to explain to. I mean, it, it was terrible. I mean... The game was a great, great game, but yes, there was so much rampant cheating going on that unless you were playing with friends or good acquaintances, you were pretty much uh, setting yourself up as a sitting deck, a moving target, to really have a bad day. I mean, imagine you just spend 20 hours, unlock some really incredibly cool weapons, then somebody comes in and does that 32,767 player kill uh, spell on you, and then you drop your weapon and they pick it up and steal it. Not cool at all. I mean, you're playing legitimate and you get screwed. And there's a infinity item usage code as well, and there's an item called Escape Doll. If you had it in your inventory, it gave you the ability to re resurrect yourself so you could never die. I mean, every time you die, you just come back alive with Escape Doll. So what people would do is they do the player kill spell, and then uh, they kill everybody in the room, and they would revive themselves because they'd have infinity item usage with Escape Doll. But uh, there are a few other aspects that I'm going to talk about when I do my town run in a few minutes. As far as these cheats are concerned. Yes, I will be doing a town run because uh, I'm going to sell off some of these items that I cannot use. If I get items that I can't use for my character, if I played online, I'd be able to drop them for like magic users if I have a cane or such. And uh, my character is the main character that uses guns, but there are special rare guns that any character could use. That you can unlock. There's like a Sonic the Hedgehog gun like the Eggman, uh, Mr. Dr. Eggman has. The magic user could get a really, really cool weapon called the Holy Ray. 
each character has their own special sub weapons that are very very incredibly cool they all have amazing style and substance they might might not all be practical for uh play use and such but you saw what happened if i get back in the corner with this character not a good thing at all so yes, try the hunter when you first play this game. Okay, right here where I teleport here. Say if somebody's on the other end of this teleport and they have a magic spell and they targeted me with, with me, I'm gonna have my screen freeze right here. And then when I uh, turn the game back on, my immediately equipped stuff is gonna be gone. My money, my weapon is gonna be white. Everything in my inventory. That was one of the malicious things that people did and it absolutely sucked. And I love the rifle. Look at this long range I have here. Again, it's a good supporter character. I mean, four player mode activate. We need this. You might notice that little uh, familiar that's following me around that looks like a little Opa Opa ship from Fantasy Star. Oh, uh, Fantasy Zone, not Fantasy Star. There's actually a Fantasy uh, Zone ship in the game too. This is a little support character that follows you around like a little ship and it has its own stats, which is really, really cool. I'm going to do this right now. It's in items. You go down to your mag. You have your own support mag right here and it actually... It's a gives its own stats there. You can get some of them as unlockable items in the game too. Weapon, uh, enemies can drop them. Okay, what do we have here? Gotta watch out for, uh, look at the heads up display, just like in games like Gauntlet, look for enemies to be coming up behind you, you don't want to be, uh, snuck attack at all. Get away from these guys. And that means I have 10 of the item, you can only have 10 of any given item. It'll make that little ding 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 noise if your uh, inventory is maxed on any specific item. That's why you have the bank in town to put extra items if you want to. Or you can sell them. Yes, I was able to do the timing to do multiple hits in a row so the enemy couldn't get any hits on me. Takes just a little bit of practice to get used to that. I'm hoping I can take out the boss. I'm really hopeful. If I don't take the boss out, it'll be part, uh, the very first part of Horse Trap against the part 15. I'll make the boss battle here. And I'll definitely play more of, uh, this game in future Horse Trap against the videos as well as, uh, Dreamcast videos. I'm very, very happy to be able to fully play this game now. There we go, level 7. See if I have anything that I can equip once I'm uh, out of the wave enemies here. I may have some spells that I can uh, level up with right now. I'm going to check. Usually you get little discs just like you do in the game Strider. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to my items here. Uh, equip. I'm looking at the stats to the right there. Uh, Psy armor. Oh yes, my evasion power and defense power goes up. 102, uh, 109. I'm gonna use this one. 
I'll see if I have anything else I can use in my uh, items. Oh, I have two spells here. Awesome. I have a uh, ice spell and a fire spell. I'll equip both of these. And then I can go to my uh, techniques and customize. I have a second action menu. I'll put uh, ice on one of them and fire on the other. Now I have ice and fire. Very, very cool. Good start there. Let's try one of these spells and see how they work out. I'll try a little bit of fire on one of these enemies and see what happens. Look at that awesomeness. Try some ice. Oh yeah, very, very cool. There's lightning too, which I hope I can unlock. I should be pretty close to the boss battle at this point. I'll do one tower run before I do the boss. And yes, when I play Call of Duty, I typically use the rifles and guns as well. I'm more into the long range characters. I don't really sit there trying to camp out. I really get into the fray of the action. I do point blank uh, sniper shots. It's pretty funny. And I love playing them with the uh, air supports that you can unlock and doing it to the point where you could actually um, literally get them one after the other in tower defense style. Okay. Oh great, where'd that guy come from? Let's take this, make sure it work of this guy. And he actually has a spell too. He throws like foey at uh, you. What I what I just did. Yes, I don't want to let him get too close to me. <laughs> oh great. And there are blue variants of this enemy, too. Quite rare, though. You, you'll probably not see them for quite a few times. You, there are four difficulties in the game. There's a... Yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. There's a normal mode, hard mode, very hard mode, and ultimate mode. Ultimate mode is exclusive to V2. What is this guy doing? Let me take you out. Stop trying to King Kong me here. There we go. I'm there in the boss battle. Definitely gonna do a town run before then. I'm going to talk a little bit about them rare items that you can unlock in the game. There's a couple hundred of them, and many of them weren't even released in the game. So there's this little problem that people would have if they were playing around with the Code Breaker codes, and they had them in their immediate inventory, and then they try going online. Sega would actually have a security check checking your immediate inventory if you happen to have one of them weapons, like the Holy Ray, before it was actually released legitimately in the game. In your inventory, you would be banned permanently online. Have to spend the entire 50 to 60 US dollars again to get another game hunter license so that you could go online again. So you had to be very, very careful if you were playing around with the codes. But there's a little bit of a exploit that I figured out, a little workaround. If you actually went to the bank in town and deposited any illegal items in the bank, then signed on online without any of them in your immediate inventory, then took them out of the bank. You could use them while you're online, but you want to make sure you put them back in the bank before you go online again, or you would have a chance of being banned. 
And I can tell you a little bit of a funny story, uh, Barberry wanted to borrow my hunter's license, yes, I let him borrow my hunter's license. And the very, very first time I played the game online, I was banned. But, uh, we did a, a devised a workaround server where we actually logged into his computer rather than Sega's servers directly. And I was able to play online, uh, after that point, even though, you know, I was banned. I had a banned account, but I was still able to play online by bypassing the server. This is very similar to the PC servers that people have had after Sega closed their servers down. It also made it possible for me to have illegal items in my inventory when I went online too. I actually completely bypassed the security checkpoint. And here's another malicious thing that people did. They would actually give people who are unsuspecting these illegal items so when they went online they'd be banned. And that's probably the most evil thing that I can imagine. It was terrible. I would never ever do anything remotely like that. It was just so terrible. Get out of this guy's way. So yes, even though I absolutely love the game, yes, you had to really be prepared for the rampant cheating and it was just so bad. Okay, and they're in the boss battle. And uh, Sega did have future incarnations of this. They had uh, episode 1 and 2 on GameCube, which I also had an episode 1 and 2 plus on GameCube, which had patches. And one of the biggest problems was uh, they had... And sorry if I'm doing Deja View, if I've already mentioned this before in another video and or even in this video. I might have done it before, but they had this broadband adapter, which was able to be used as an exploit to play GameCube games. I mean, actually stream them directly from your... PC to your GameCube, and that is the reason why the uh, broadband adapter was taken off of storage shelves. And uh, the sad thing is, the games only ran at about 5 to 11 frames per second. I mean, Sega and Nintendo kind of over exaggerated on their uh, worries of that. I mean, it was definitely not a threat to have games running at 5 to 11 frames per second streaming from your PC to a GameCube. And I still have my GameCube. I love all the games on it. My Metroid Primes are my favorite on the system. One and two. And I'm very, very much looking forward to Metroid Prime 3 when it finally comes out on Nintendo Switch. And there is a Fantasy Star Online uh, 2 purportedly coming out to uh, Switch probably later this year, if not next year. Might get me back in the game. They also had the Fantasy Star uh, Universe and... Fantasy Star Portable on PSP, which uh, didn't do as well in the United States, but they did tremendously well in Japan. Japan definitely had a bigger call following as far as uh, Fantasy Star Online games were concerned. And even back in the day, we had USA, Europe, and Japanese ser servers. I typically played on the Japanese servers, and surprisingly, there was little to no cheating on the Japanese servers. I remember actually jumping in them servers and playing the games and I'd have people message me saying thank you for not cheating and I mean it was incredibly awesome great great uh, uh servers on the Japanese servers so I'm almost to the boss battle here I'm gonna do one town run before I get there and yes I'm gonna include some documentation in the release so that you could uh, play around with some of these uh Knowing exactly which character to use, your section IDs, where you could get some of the weapons and rares from, all that good stuff. It's almost a moment of truth here, just a few minutes away from the boss battle. And there are a couple of strategic uh, things I'm going to tell you about as far as boss battles are concerned. Like I said, like in Bloodborne, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, where you drop your money and such. This happens in this game, too. And, uh, you can store all your money in the bank, but I have a couple other tricks I use for boss battles to make sure I don't lose my money. And I'm going to clarify both of those. Okay. One more of these guys. I 
Of course. I'm going back to the town anyway in a moment, so it's all good to go. I'll take this guy out first, though. And one nice thing I love about this game, if you go through a barrier like this, the enemies won't follow you. I mean, he can shoot a projectile at me, but he can't follow me. He'll eventually turn around and go back. I mean, that's a little thing about manipulating the AI. And just like in my Rygar video, you can actually get enemies stuck on objects and such, too, which is really funny. I'm gonna try to take this. I mean, he doesn't seem to be moving. I'm gonna try to take him on anyway. I'll go right past him. <laughs> Usually they turn around though. They get predominantly crazier and more hard to manage in uh, harder difficulties like in Ultimate. They're uh, very, very fast and intimidating and much harder to stop. Even in uh, Goomba type, uh, type enemies at the beginning of the Force One are incredibly difficult to take out at the beginning of uh, Ultimate mode. Now here's one of the very, very big things that you're gonna need to do before you go into a boss battle always do this leave a telepipe right here you're gonna need the telepipe right here because if you die in the boss battle you can actually go to the telepipe from town and get right back to the boss battle okay i'm gonna go back to town right now and uh get everything in order as far as my health items i want to have everything uh up to date here go to the shop real quick See if I have anything I can sell real quick. Uh, don't need that. Just selling the stuff that I really don't need right now. DX means I can't equip it. That's a, a magic user item. You gotta be careful, make sure you don't sell anything valuable that you might want. Like that Resta is a heal spell. Zond is a, a spell for lightning, which I should be able to use uh, probably if I level up one more time. I have uh, two Restas, so I could uh, sell one of those. Okay, I'm gonna buy some health items. Too bad I don't have a uh, escape doll. That'd be coming real handy right now. Since I'm there in the time frame where uh, I'm at the four gigabyte limit for this video, I'm going to uh, basically stop the video and start recording again right when I telepipe. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. I really hope I pull this off because if I do not pull this off, I'm going to uh, do it in part 15 of Horse Driver Against. I might level up one or two more levels and take on the boss so it's not as embarrassing. I'm going to put a telepipe here. Again, it is always good to leave a telepipe here if you decide you want to fight the boss battle again. And there's a little technique you could use if you get screwed in a boss battle. The save face. I'll show you that too. Again, if you die in a boss battle, all your money, everything's going to drop. Look, I have 4,121 Masada right now. So what I would typically do is go to the bank in town and deposit it all so I have no chance to lose it on the boss, but uh, I'm going to take the chance here. Hopefully I can do this. It's going to be a challenge. 4,000 uh, Masetta is quite a bit to lose, so I definitely don't want to lose it here. But I can recover since I have that telepipe. You'll see what I mean. Very, very cool boss here. I'm going to definitely do more dragon-based games. Definitely get the hell out of this guy's way because of that. Yes, I'm waiting for the last season of Game of Thrones. It took long enough to get them dragons, and uh, I love that twist ending to the last season, which I'm not going to talk about for those of you who have not yet seen it.
The music actually glitched out here. I mean, that's happened in the real game before, not just an emulator. I've had the music disappear in the real game before. Kind of interested not having the music right now. And I definitely don't want this guy to step on me, because that could be over with in an instant if he steps on me. Oh, great. Okay, come on. Stay down. Remember that Chuck Norris, uh, Bruce Lee fight where Bruce Lee kept telling him to stay down and he broke both his arms and legs? That was a really, really cool fight. And that might be where the origin of many of, uh, Chuck Norris's metaphors and euphemisms come from, in my opinion. Okay. I think I remember him doing a crazy attack. It's been a while since I fought this guy. Definitely don't want to get hit by any more of that fire, though. Come on, now. Definitely very interested in not having the music, but it makes my voice easier to hear. Get out of this guy's way. Stop moving for a second. Let me get a good aim train on you here. <laughs> That's where the triple hit combo comes in play. Get as many of these as I can. Good chance of taking a boss out before he gets into his crazy attacks. Oh great, I have a feeling he's gonna do that crazy tremor attack now. Get out of the dodge. Oh no. I hate this attack. You gotta be very, very careful and try to dodge it. I'm gonna get wailed on by him right there. Oh yeah, just dodged it. He, I think he does two more of them if I remember correctly. They're really t tough to dodge. Okay, I dodged two of them. Here's another one. No! I knew I'd get hit by at least one of them. I think he only does three in a row. Okay, come on, I can do this. I got this. Hopefully I can do this within one or two rounds here. Stop walking! Oh no, not again. He's gonna do that tremor attack again. Oh, hopefully I don't get hit by this. I have a feeling I will. Almost always hits me. No! There we go. It's like a mini Atari game here. There's another one. I knew I'd get hit by that one. I got six health potions left. Hopefully I won't get hit by the third one. You gotta watch out for the fire on the ground too. That could do some considerable damage to you. Come on, I got this. Oh, great. He's going to do that dive attack again. I know it. <sighs> Six health things left. Hopefully I can save them. One there. Two more attacks. 
Like I said, not an easy battle with one player, especially low level like I am. I'm kind of screwed right now. Almost dodged that one. Five left. My resources are dwindling. But very, very entertaining boss battle for sure. Let's make this the final moment that counts. Come on now. Land. There we go. Yes. Anyways, uh, what happens if you're close to dying and you're almost out of items? And you're not worried about uh, coming back and reclaiming your loot and stuff? Just come back, uh, go to quit. Quit mid-boss battle before you lose your money and you'll be fine. 